So hello everyone. Uh, it's nice to see you all, hear you all. Uh, we had a break last week and uh, now I'm sure that all of you are busy or getting like kind of relaxed um, and I really hope that you will have some rest because you really deserve it. Um, so today we are going to have the webinar by Saudat Tajiba, but before we start, um, Yelena Volkova would like to make an announcement, but actually I already posted this announcement both in our Facebook group and the Mentor Hub Telegram group. Um, now it's your opportunity to clarify anything if you want to ask questions. And she'll mm -hmm. talk about the mentoring program. Yes. Nadira, uh, how, how much time do you think we have for this? Because I don't think that we, it's, it's ethical to take so much time. No, no, no. Maybe. It's just maybe five minutes maximum, right? Yes. So like if yes. there are too many questions, yeah, then you can give your, <clears throat> uh, your email or contact details, yes. right? So that they can ask. Yes, sure. Okay. So. Uh, colleagues, uh, I hope you hear me okay. Uh, Nadira, if the sound is uh, fluctuating, just wave or do something so that I know. Probably okay. you know myself, you know Active Learning and Teaching of Foreign Languages in Uzbekistan magazine. And uh, probably you want to try and publish your article, but you don't know how to start with your idea because i know from my personal experience that it is very um cumbersome sometimes the process is difficult you feel that you have an idea what to write about but you are not sure whether this is something that is worth investing your energy and time or this may not be interesting to other people so this is one reason why myself and nadira we decided that it would be good to uh, start a project during which we want to try and help people to get their first draft ready to be published in, in the magazine. And another reason, uh, over five years of the existence of the magazine, I noticed that um, we in Uzbekistan have a very low awareness of uh, how academic uh, writing should be done, what uh, regulations should be adhered to in terms of referencing, citations, plagiarism. So that's why this is my second byproduct that I want to achieve during this mentoring project. Uh, I want to show people to probably teach them a little bit how the uh, academic writing of a high standard should be approached. So basically what we offer, we want to have a group of 10 people for the first round of this project. And we want to help those people to start from complete scratch from zero. And within maybe two, three months time, we want to help these people to develop uh, their personal idea into an academic article. And if this is successful, then they can first publish in a local magazine uh, that I mentioned that I represent here. And also they can further uh, develop their article, maybe enlarge uh, it a little bit with action research. And then we will give some suggestions how they can seek for international publication. So at the moment, if you are interested, if you qualify, you see on the screen the requirements, please hit me a message in the email that you see, or you can write to me through the Telegram. I think this, is, uh, this can be organized as well. And as soon as we have people selected, approved for this group of people, I will then navigate how we will be working. So basically I'm waiting for interested people to join this project to see how it's going to work and if this is going to be successful or not. 
Anything else, Nadira, to, to add? Yeah, I just wanted to add about the magazine uh, that you mentioned. Um, so if you don't know, this is the um, ALTFL. It's a magazine um, approved by VAC. Yes. And it is free to publish. You know, usually when you go to these VAC magazines, you have to pay money to get published, right? So this is free and it's an amazing opportunity for you um, to... Um, work with the editor-in-chief of this magazine and uh, um, have more opportunities to get published, right? So that you have a kind of a good quality product, good quality article, um, that you will be proud of it yourself, right? And another thing that I wanted to mention, it's this time of the year, summer, when uh, you can reflect on your experience, right? And at the same time, relax, right? But it's time, I think it's... Uh, kind of uh, plan for reflect uh, on your uh, last year and plan forward um, and also work on your professional development and I think so that's a perfect time for for this so I would really uh, encourage everyone yeah just a quick note before I pass to so that if you wish to have a look at the magazine it is available now online in application that can be downloaded from google play onto android telephones and then the application will direct you what to do how to read it oh yes and this is nadira is sending the email of the magazine mm -hmm. thank you very thank much you. for listening and so that over to you good luck thank you very much thank you <clears throat> thank you so Thank you very much. Yes. Um, yeah. If you, yeah, as we said, so if you have any questions, you can ask in the Telegram group or write uh, to uh, Elena. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. So um, thank you so much. So we're starting. So uh, today we have uh, Saudat Tajiva. Thanks for um, volunteering to um, conduct the webinar today. So, Saudat uh, works as an adjunct professor at the Webster University in Tashkent, and she's also a teacher trainer in the Innovation Center uh, at the Uzbek State World Languages University. Um, she's a business English instructor, IELTS instructor. So, um, yeah, and today she will be talking about motivation, uh, how to boost students motivation and develop kind of bright and motivating lessons okay thanks a lot over to you mm -hmm. can i demonstrate now Yeah, we can see your screen. In this case, let's begin. One child, one teacher, one book, one pen can change the world. I'm sure all the teachers who are here do agree with this. Having these things can change the world. motivation and developing bright lessons okay first of all let me introduce to you my agenda today we're gonna talk about motivation we'll touch teacher and student motivation of course and then we'll turn to the ways of organizing bright lessons in organizing three things are very important it is bloom's taxonomy engage study and activate esa stages as well as differentiation. And then we'll talk about what makes our lessons shine. Here we'll discuss the cues to use at the lessons, 
And then we'll talk about providing feedback in a hamburger style. It will be very interesting to touch this topic. Now, at the beginning of our webinar, let's look at the picture. You can see, I'm sure you are all aware of this picture, right? I can't hear you. Are you aware of this, right? Have you seen this picture? You see yeah, many, yeah. Yeah, many teachers, unfortunately, think that teachers at the beginning of the school year are fresh, strong enough, right? And responsible enough, but at the end of the school year, they became, they always become like these poor old. But there is a solution to this. If you don't want to be like this second on the picture all, there is one solution. What do you think? What is it? What can help us not to become like this second all on, on the picture? Any answers? What motivation. Do you think? Yes, definitely. We should have motivation and we should also motivate our students. The answer is, of course, motivation. So motivation itself includes a lot of parts, right? It can be ideas, performances, different goals of people, encouragement of teacher towards the students, support of the teacher, and the most important one is, of course, attitude. All these functions are collected in motivation, of course. Now, there are very interesting quotes about motivation. Let's, let's touch the first one. There are three things to remember about education. The first one is motivation. The second one is motivation. And the third one is also motivation. This is a very good quote of the former U.S. Secretary of Education, Carol Bell, which can be, cannot, cannot be forgotten by any teacher and student around the world. You see, motivation plays the first three roles in the people's life. And not only in the people's life, but also in the life of the students and teachers. There's another quote, which is very interesting also by Seymour Poppert. Education has very little to do with explanation. It has to do with engagement and falling in love with the material. Definitely. If teachers as well as students fall in love with the material, I mean, if the material is very interesting and involving attractive for them, in this case, only motivation comes. Do you agree with me? I think yes, right? Okay. Now, let's continue in this case. Now, for the beginning, let's have a very interesting call on motivation. There is a very interesting uh, special app on the internet, which is called Call Everywhere. Actually, I have already sent the link to the group. I'm now resending the link to the group. Now, please use the link and uh, not going out of the room, or you can type the link, you can see uh, on the screen also the link, right? If you cannot hear it from the Telegram. So please go there and try to complete the poll in one minute. How motivated you are, we will see in this case, okay? So please use the link, which I have sent to the group, please. Mm -hmm. And let's begin. I posted the link in the chat box as well, just in case you didn't get in Telegram. Miss Saudat, mm -hmm. how many questions are there? 
10, just 10 questions. Uh, how to move to the next question? Just, just I uh, can. There should be a button on the top next. Uh huh. Thank you. There is no next button here. I think you um I think you need to install the app to be able to answer other questions. Otherwise I can see only one question. Yes. What about others? Is there anyone who is able to answer all the questions? No, unfortunately. No, it's just no, one. We, question. Can, we cannot move to the next question. Yeah. Oh really? Mm -hmm. Okay, let me check in this case. I'll reactivate it again. Now, can you see now? Can you see the, the other questions now? Yes, now it's possible, I think. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In this case, we'll add one more minute. Mm -hmm. Finish? Yes, we saw that. Let's, let's see the responses in this case. Now, the first question was, I consider myself as a motivated person. Perfect. Many of you said that you completely agree with this. Perfect. But some of you said just agree. You need some more motivation. Okay. The second question was, I teach my students how to use self-motivation strategies. Wow, many people said agree and completely agree. Some people said that they have some hesitation in this, just a few people. Okay, third question was, I try to do all the activities together with my students during my lessons. I mean, as a student, wow. Many people agree with this, and many people completely agree. Just some people said sometimes, yes, there are some hesitations. Okay, question four. I use the tasks only from the book, even if they are not related to the interest of my students. Many people said no, they use real life, authentic materials, right? And some people said, no, no, no. And some people hesitated, but just some people said that, yes, they use. I guess they are using this because authority asked them to use, I guess, right? Yeah? Okay. Now, next question. 
I make tasks attractive by using games and competitions. Oh, completely everybody said yes. Completely agree. Some people said agree, and just one person said, I have some hesitation sometimes, right? Okay, question six. I make the task to my students' needs and rather than exam requirements. Many people said yes, and some people said not so completely. Some people had some hesitation. Okay, okay now question seven. I encourage my students to teach and evaluate each other. This is a very good technique when they evaluate each other. Many people said agree and completely agree. Just two people said I'm not sure about it sometimes, right? Maybe there are some reasons there. Okay, I try to seem strict to my students as the teacher should be serious. Oh, we have different types of answers here. Many people said no and I'm not sure. They have some hesitation, sometimes like this, sometimes like this, right? So some people think, just three people think and just three other people think that yes, teachers should be very serious, definitely, sometimes yes. And just one person said completely no, I'm not a serious person. That was so good, very much. Mm -hmm. Okay, question nine. I try to give my students some tasks to encourage them to study more, right? So we have different responses here also. Uh, we have almost the same amount of answers for all the categories here. And the last question, I encourage my students to give, to provide feedback uh, just after my lesson, each lesson, we have different answers. Some people, yes, some teachers sometimes hesitate that uh, whether to ask the students to provide the feedback or no. It's also uh, sometimes good because you don't know will it motivate you or no, but to motivate, we will talk about it uh, during the session, of course. What should we do to be provided a feedback which cannot, which will not hurt you, right? And some people said, yes, I do agree, and said agree. Just one person said, no, I, I hate feedbacks, yeah? Okay, thank you very much. This was interesting poll here this year. And let's continue Your our screen is not visible, your screen. Ah, oh, really? Now? Now is it visible now? Yes, yes. 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 Okay. Now we have completed this zip poll perfectly. Now you have identified in which level of motivation you are now. But just before just after this session, I'm sure you will be more motivated in this sphere. Okay. So now let's continue in this case. What is motivation actually? Actually, there are four types of motivation. The first one is uh, according to source. According to source, motivation can be in two types. It can be external, which includes extrinsic and identified. It can be internal, which includes intrinsic and interjective. Or we can look at this sphere from different perspectives in case of action. We have two types of motivation for action, extrinsic and intrinsic. And for non-action, we have identified and interjected. Okay, what do all these types of motivations mean? Let's begin with extrinsic one. So extrinsic, it means from external sources. The motivation comes from external sources. The student or teacher is motivated by other people, some other uh, films maybe, maybe some other people who are doing well, you can be motivated here. In terms of intrinsic motivation, intrinsic motivation comes from inside of you. You have intrinsic, you are intrinsically motivated and you want to do everything by yourself. Nobody pushes you to do this. 
if we talk about identified type of motivation, identified type of motivation is very close to extrinsic motivation. However, here the person knows uh, that this person should do this. However, this person didn't decide to do this, to be motivated by this or not. This is called identified one. And mm -hmm. introjected one, introjected type of motivation is a type of motivation where the person uh, as a mature person knows that this person should do this thing according to this motivation. However, he is not ready sometimes or if this person doesn't feel this motivation, he will feel guilty. So identify the person knows, but didn't decide. And introjected means the person knows, but couldn't do and feels guilty as this person couldn't do this, right? Okay, mm -hmm. let's talk about intrinsic and extrinsic motivation in more details here, okay? So intrinsic motivation, as we told, comes to you because of the interest and enjoyment in the task itself. You see the task and you want to do it intrinsically. From internal side, it comes to you. I love it. I should do it. Because it involves enjoyment of the person. The person has purpose and the growth of the person. The person is grown up enough and feels that this person should do this. He is motivated. And curiosity, you have some passion to do this and you want to do this intrinsically, right? Then self-expression. This person is self-expressive and wants to do it him or herself. And the last one is for fun. You want to do it for fun. This is all, uh, these are all the parts of intrinsic motivation, of course. If we turn to Extrinsic one here in extrinsic motivation, it comes because of the outcome that will result by doing the task. In this case, the person needs some praises. The student wants the teacher to be to praise him or her. Some the student wants the teacher to give some bonuses, some pay rises, some promotion. In this case, the student wants to work more. In this case, the role of the teacher is different here. Here, teacher should feel that the student wants to do this according to promotion, according to bonuses, and we as teachers should give them these bonuses and benefits, and of course, winnings and perks, right? So, when we talk about intrinsic and extrinsic types of motivation, of course, it's really important to talk about fixed and growth mindsets. So what are these? And when and by whom these kinds of mindsets were developed? In 2007, a very famous psychologist of the US, Carl Dweck, participated in TED Talks and that time she introduced two types of mindsets for people. This one is called fixed mindset and while the second one is called growth mindset. So what is the difference between them? Any ideas? Any ideas about fixed and growth mindset? You can switch on your microphones and tell please. Okay. So, fixed mindset. People cannot decide which mindset they have because very often we are in the middle of fixed and growth mindset. Why? Because in fixed mindset, the person, the person uh, has certain rules, certain level of understanding, and they, they think that they cannot do anything else uh, beyond their abilities. Very often the people say, failure is the limit of my abilities. I cannot do more than I can. Very often they said 
they say when I'm frustrated, I give up. They say, oh, I'm frustrated and I cannot, cannot do anything else and I don't want to do this. And very often they say feedback and criticism are personal. Oh, this feedback is personal and it's, it's very negative. Oh, I should give up. So fixed mindset describes that people cannot do anything beyond their abilities. While growth mindset is a level of growth of the person where people want to redefine their limits. They say, failure is an opportunity to grow. If I fail, no, it's okay for me. I can do better. I can do better when I'm motivated by something. Or they say, I can learn to do anything I want. In this case, only I can redefine my limits. And in terms of feedback, they say, feedback is constructive for me. Oh, after this feedback, even if it is positive or negative, I should raise myself. I should do something to increase my knowledge. This is growth mindset. Why I am saying that we cannot be in one type of mindset, fix it or growth one. Why? Because it depends sometimes on our needs. It depends on our situation. It can depend on our knowledge on this thing, or it can depend on our abilities. So we are in the center of these types of mindsets. Okay, now let's have practice with mindsets in this case. Why isn't it going to the next one? Okay. So imagine your student got A in the test, right? Now, we have two types of growth mindsets as growth and fixed mindset. As a teacher, what do you think? What kind of feedback you should provide to your students to increase their mindset? What kind of sentence you will provide for feedback for increasing their fixed mindset? And what kind of sentence like feedback should be provided to them, like increasing their growth mindset? Any ideas? Okay. You can write in the chat if you want, or you can switch on your microphones and pronounce it. Any ideas? Hello, Mr. Sadat. Hello. Okay. Uh, what will you tell your students to increase his fixed mindset? Uh, maybe we should say like appraisal was good job, great job, you did a great mm -hmm. job, these kind of things. And this will help to like provide the growth mindset for them. They will try to be better. Okay. And you mean good job is for growth mindset? Not fix it. Or oh, fix it one. Okay. Any other ideas? Thank you. Um, can I try? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, uh, first of all, we have to give the positive feedback that at the same time provide some feedback which makes the student work harder on himself or herself, like mm -hmm. sandwich way of giving the feedback, like sandwich feedback. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it will be for growth mindset. Second one. Yeah. Okay. Any other ideas? Thank you very much. Any other ideas? Somebody is waiting. Okay, just wonderful. Okay. So, actually, if you want to increase their just fixed mindset, you will provide like this feedback like fixed mindset. You got an A on your test. You are such a smart kid. Why this is for fixed mindset? Cause here the student will think, oh, I'm smart kid and I can get A and the student will not do anything else to be improved. 
But for growth mindset, you say you work it hard and study to get that A on your test. If you keep studying and working even harder, you will improve even more. This is for improving the growth mindset. You both were right in this case, because if you just say, just say, good job, and just say, you got an A, you are very smart, in this case, it will be fixed one. They will not try to redefine their limits. However, if we provide more constructive feedback, and explain to them why they gained the success. In this case, they can understand it and the growth mindset will be activated. Or oh, another example, you got every single question right on the test. You are the perfect student. This is just praising, yeah? This is for fixed mindset. The student will understand that the student is perfect student and he can solve all the questions and then never again he will work on redefining the limits however if you want to introduce the growth mindset here you said you say you nailed the test you couldn't have done that without studying and working hard by saying without studying and working hard you couldn't have done this you are explaining to the student why the student got this A. And it will encourage the student to launch the growth mindset here, right? Good job. Okay. Now, let's continue this teacher motivation. So, if you, wa if you want to motivate your students well, and according to these two types of mindsets, we teachers should be motivated ourselves, right? So, what is teacher motivation? What is teacher motivation for you? Any idea? Any ideas, participants? Be active, please. Hello. Hello. Hey. Yeah? Mm -hmm. um, I think the same motivational uh, sentences are good for teachers also. For example, you did mm -hmm. it well, your lesson plan was good, I liked your lesson, or something like this thing. Okay, and what kind of motivation will it be? Intrinsic or extrinsic for the teacher? For the teacher, um, this sentence I think will be extrinsic. Yeah, perfect, thank you. Yeah, they will be extrinsically motivated here. Thank you very much for your answer. Okay, now what can the teachers do to motivate themselves? You see in the picture that teachers are very motivated, but how can you motivate yourself as a teacher? Because if the teacher is not motivated, the students cannot be, you see? So the first one, Set daily intentions to fulfill. Every day when you stand up, say, okay, today I will fulfill this. For example, today I will complete my article and I will upload it to Yelena Volkova's printing house, right? So here, if you set your motivation, like a teacher, and then you can give your students this article to read and they can benefit it and they can get more motivation. They can say, oh, my teacher could print the article in a very prestigious journal and why not? Why, why I cannot do this? Yeah, you see, you will motivate yourself and your students at the same time. Okay, second one, try something new every day. Don't uh, be exposed, exposed on one thing. Everyday vocabulary, everyday grammar, everyday reading, or everyday listening. Now, try something new every day. For example, you are teaching grammar today, and please teach grammar with some videos. Okay, the next day you should teach grammar again, right? But this time, use grammar with some audio recordings. The third day, we teach grammar with some interesting activities and games. And we will talk about 
activities further in this session, okay? So next one, update your workplace. Updating your workplace is very important. You see, especially women like updating their house, right? When you update your house, you will be very happy. And when you look at it, oh, it's more beautiful now. Like this, in the classroom also, when you update your workplace, when you move the chairs in different places, right? When you move your blackboards, your projectors in different places, maybe you will move your posters around the room. In this case, you will be more motivated. You will feel that something new is coming to you this day. Okay, next one. Embrace motivational quotes. Every day when you wake up, try to read one motivational quote for teachers. For example, this is the best day for me. I am a really motivating person and teacher to my students. All my students love my lesson because I incorporate a lot of technology and activities. By this, by reading this kind of motivation quotes, where you can motivate yourself better. Next one, talk to different colleagues. Talking to different colleagues, different people who are teaching English and professional English is really good. When you talk to different people, you will get more ideas from them, right? For example, when I talked to when I talked to Miss Madeira, uh, I had one fresh idea to launch my own channel. And you see, in one day, I have seventy-five people in my channel. But it is different one. It is different. It's not for webinars. It's for lesson plans. You see, when just I talked to Miss Madeira, and then I got an idea about launching this channel. When you talk to different people you can get different ideas. And in the group of Mental Hub, I read uh, Ulubek Nur wrote a very interesting quote. When you talk to people who got nine from IELTS, you can get this also. When you talk to people who live abroad, you can go to abroad also. When you talk to people who are motivated, you can be motivated yourself, you see? Talking to different colleagues can be very beneficial for the teacher to be motivated. So next one, encourage feedback from your students. Encouraging feedback from our students, unfortunately, can be sometimes can sometimes hurt. But as the teachers, as teachers, we cannot be afraid of this because if the feedback is positive, yes you will be motivated more. But if it's a feedback is somehow negative, in this case, of course, you can take it as positive again and you can try to take it positive and say, oh, next time I'll get more positive feedback from the same student. How? I will set my daily intentions. I will try something new which can crack my students. I update my workplace and embrace motivational quotes and my students' opinions will be changed, right? And the last one, feel yourself as a part of the class. As a teacher, if you cannot feel yourself as a part of the class, you cannot be motivated. Because when you work, it doesn't matter if you work with younger learners or adult learners or middle-aged, if you feel yourself as a part of a class, if you do everything with your students, you will be encouraged. And you see, you will feel younger. Uh, for example, I always try to be a part of my class and uh, it doesn't matter what kind of people I am teaching. I also teach very young people who are 16, 17 years old, more only teachers. And even when I teach them, I feel more motivated in this case. Why? Because I feel myself as young people. So motivation for teachers is very important. Now here I would like to show you my uh, favorite type of getting feedback from my students. Getting feedback from your students should be very creative. If you ask your students to provide very creative feedback, Keep in mind, 
they will not be lazy to do this because the students like doing something creative always, right? Uh, just you can ask them to provide some creative reflection at the end of the course, at the end of semester or after each, each lesson. Don't ask them just to write something on the paper. It will not be so interesting for them sometimes. Switch the roles, of course, sometimes. Or uh, I always try to ask my students to provide ref uh, creative reflection at the end of the course and you see what students can do. Even some students will not sleep at night and provide some reflection to your lesson. By this way, you will not only be motivated yourself, but also your students will be motivated because they are doing something interesting beyond your English classes. But still, it should always be related to your class. Ask them to write some um, concepts they learned, some new games they learned, some new information they learned using technology, and they will show you how they got all this information during your lessons here. Okay, that's all with teacher motivation. Let's turn to student motivation. Okay, what do you think? How we can motivate our students? Any ideas? Guys, please be active. Switch on your microphones and write your opinion. How can you uh, motivate? May I say? Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, truly say, uh, in my lessons, I always try to motivate my students by saying uh, and making such kind of practice, teaching practice, and giving them chance uh, mm -hmm. to be a teacher in the future. Oh. They are... Mm -hmm. And it's okay. a very cool and great mm -hmm. uh, for them because they all feel what kind of uh, challenges uh, will be there and what kind of uh, mistakes they can do and they can uh, change. They have a chance uh, to change uh, their uh, looks about teaching process and it is very good motivation to mm -hmm. my students and they will appreciate your labor yeah. right yeah they will appreciate your lessons they will feel how difficult it is to be a teacher yeah Perfect mm -hmm. technique any other ideas thank you any other ideas uh well can i say okay. something mm -hmm. uh, yeah yeah well i just share some responsibilities or roles in the class for my younger students so they feel like responsible. Mm -hmm. It's not just me teaching them or it's just their class. It's the, the lesson that we do together. So, the, so they feel uh, responsible. So they motivate them a lot. Oh, perfect technique. I do love this very much. Thank you. Now, and we have uh, some messages in the chat. The Zupra says to share gifts. Right, even if it is a very small thing, right? Small gift, pen, or even rubber, it will motivate your students. Right, very good. Lily says, well prepared lesson plan. Yeah, well prepared lesson plan motivates your students. I think you mean well prepared PPTs also, right? They should be bright. Yes, perfect. Vilipuza Lingua says, creating sense of competition. Oh, I do love this. So creating sense of competition is one of the best types of motivation, right? Okay, inviting guest speakers. Hello, Khadirova. Uh, I'm sorry, is it Khadirova? Khadirova, I'm sorry. Hello, Khadirova is saying inviting guest speakers. This is really motivating activity. Yeah, guest speakers can motivate your students better than you sometimes. Why? Because they, uh, this person can be somebody new to them, right? To share their experience. And Shaknoza von Luminova is saying, I think we have to motivate them both in extrinsically and intrinsically, definitely, right? Because uh, both types of motivation are really important here. And we have Mahtuna Hidirva. Students, no matter how old they are, like to be awarded, right? Sometimes I use uh, real coins 
yeah to award them. Are they Uzbek coins or international ones? <laughs> For each true answer, and I award them with a coin. A really good technique. It's really interesting, right? Money can be interesting for students sometimes. And Nafisa Nagamla is saying changings in the learning process. You mean shifts, right? Yes, as we told already, when you change your learning process, your teaching process, they can be motivated better. Shahnoza Munina again is saying by praising, encouraging, and giving good marks. Yeah. Uh, in Uzbekistan, many students are really motivated with good marks, right? Yeah. Okay. Why not give them good marks sometimes? Tahmina Yusufa is saying motivational expressions, gifts. Yeah, they are really, really important. And Madina Khan Turdimatova is saying praising them no matter the answers would be somehow great point feeling the sense of motivation. Right. These are all very good techniques. I'm very happy that all these the teachers who are participating in this motivational webinar are really motivating teachers towards their students. Okay, what? Other types of motivation can be done to the students. So, effective ways to motivate, to get motivated the students. As a teacher, the first motivation for students is smile. Smiling teacher can always motivate the students, believe me. Smile, be expressive, and the most important thing, call the students with their names. For example, Mamura, Mamura, are you here? Mamura Yusupova. Yes, I am. You see, you see the reaction when I am calling her with her name, Mamura, and I just added Yusupova to, uh, to get her no, right? So you see the reaction when you call the students with not surnames, but names, they are motivated. She's smiling again, right? So next one, get them involved, encourage friendly atmosphere. Yes, you are right in some terms. Teachers should be very serious, but not always. You should smile and encourage friendly atmosphere. When the students feel this friendly atmosphere, they will be motivated. They will have some interest to the topic you are teaching but if you are all the time serious yeah you will not your students will not be motivated and they will not want to learn anything here okay now next one go creative draw connections to real life very often it's really good to draw connections to real life. Why? Because students are always interested in real life. Authentic material should be used in the lessons, right? So when everything at the lesson while explaining is connected to real life situations, real life comments, it's really interesting. For example, you are a teacher at Turin University where a lot of boys study, right? Yeah, Guzal, you are the, you are teaching there. So, and you, what what kind of topic should be related here? What kind of topic can be interesting for these people who are studying at Turin University? What do you think, Guzal? Are you here? Yeah, I'm here, Miss Oda. Okay. Okay, what kind of real life situations? Uh, all right, considering the specialization of Turin University, mm -hmm. students are encouraged to study technical English, including engineering, uh, yeah. architecture, IT, mm -hmm. and others. So, the uh, best way is to connect your English classes with classes engineering. Too. Yeah, yeah. Content. yeah mm -hmm. perfect. You see, drawing connections to real life is really important. Offer incentives, pray, praise them when necessary. Actually, I shouldn't talk about it a lot because I saw your answers. Many of you do this. You offer incentives and not only incentives, it shouldn't be gift uh, all the time. It shouldn't be present all the time. It can be just praising words like good job, well done, or fabulous, awesome, perfect, like this, right? 
Okay, be constructive in criticism. You know what is constructive feedback, right? So feedback should be constructive all the time. It shouldn't hurt the student. When student is hurt by the criticism of teacher, the student will lose the sense of competition, the sense of studying, learning. For this reason, try to be constructive when you are providing critical feedback, negative feedback to your learners. Next one, put some excitement into your speech. While you are speaking, don't speak in a monotonous way. Try to keep the pitch of your voice, right? Your voice should go up, down, when necessary, up, when necessary, down, and etc. Most good. Do you have any question? You are raising your hand. Okay. No. Okay, so next one, move around the room and use gestures as you teach. So, uh, just staying in one place cannot motivate our students. It's better to move around the room as we talked uh, about it in teacher motivation, right? So here it's better to move around the room and use a lot of guest gestures when you are speaking because you know, while you are speaking, not only the pitch of your voice, but also your gestures can invoke, can attract your students. And they want it or not, they will listen to you very carefully. It's a really good technique. Change the design of the classroom sometimes. Actually, we talked about it already, right? You can change the design of your classroom, of your tables in different styles. One day you can organize them like circle. Another day you can organize it like ball pitch, right? One day you can ask them to sit any way as they want. And if you have a comfort for this, you someday you can ask your students to go outside the room in the corridor to the corridor or if you have a garden where you teach right you can go to the garden and organize a small picnic with your students and have your lessons there it will be really interesting for your students because um, having the lessons outside can be very involving and next one, design your PPTs and materials colorfully and attractively. When you design your PPTs with different colors, with different pictures related to your topic, you can attract your learners more. And you will, why? Why? Because they will have some imagination what about you are talking by looking at the pictures. And colors will involve them a lot, right? And then be artistic and build rapport with your students. You know what is rapport? Rapport is somehow close connection with your students. Don't talk to your students only about the topic, only about the lesson. Sometimes praise them like, oh, you have wonderful dress today. How is your brother, newborn brother? Is he okay? How is your mother? I heard she was ill for some time. Is she okay nowadays? You see, it will build a rapport with your students. And sometimes when necessary, be artistic. Feel yourself like another Kubaiva, our Uzbek actress, right? Sometimes in the stage, on the stage of theater, like in your classroom. So as a teacher, you can motivate your students by using these ways. Maybe you have some other ways. You are welcome to write these ways in comments, in Telegram, or in our Zoom room, right? Okay. So maybe you are thinking that I am providing a lot of things how to motivate the students, and it will be very difficult to combine all of them in one place, right? Imagine, teaching English is an iceberg. And you see, icebergs, some part can be seen only, but the bigger part cannot be seen. Now, this is uh, like workshop for you. Try to put some necessary words 
adjectives or nouns which cannot be seen when teachers teach the students. And here we will have just success. People see your success, but what people cannot see in teachers' abilities and in teachers' work. Now take one minute for thinking again, and then we will discuss. Okay, the time is up. Any ideas? Okay, what we cannot see? What is under the iceberg? Mm -hmm. Please, uh, you are welcome to write in, in the chat or if you want, you can say by switching on your microphone. Hardworking, Zuhra provided. They cannot see teachers' embarrassment, uncertainty. Yes, Chef Nazar, right? Sophia is saying long hours of preparation. Definitely, definitely. Okay. Karen so says uh, worries. Lilfuza Olingva is saying hard work, resilience, right? Frustration, perfect. Perspiration, oh, perfect. Patience, effort. Mm -hmm. Okay, what else? Doubt, yeah, sometimes doubt cannot be seen, but it is good when they don't see your doubts. Mm -hmm. Okay, now you are all right. Self-development, right? Mm -hmm. Hesitation, right? Yes, all this cannot be seen here. Anxiety, not here, right? All this, unfortunately, negative developments cannot be seen because they are under the water like this iceberg, yeah? However, people can see only success, right, you see? So, this is the version of the internet. So here you can see success can be seen to people, yeah? And persistence, failure, sacrifice, disappointment, good habits, hard work, dedication, and all you have mentioned cannot be seen to the people, right? So it's not easy to be a teacher. Why? Because teachers are the holders of all the professions. They bring up all the professions, you know, right? Doctors are brought up by teachers. Builders are brought up by teachers. Lawyers are also brought up by teachers. We always nurture all the professions. Do you agree with me? Okay. Now, let's continue. So, what are the most effective ways to motivate your students in developing lessons? We have looked through as a teacher, but now in developing lessons, right? So, first one. Bring something new to every class. Make it relevant. Try to provide some relevant, authentic materials, new materials to every class. Next one. Know the labels, interests, strengths, limitations of your students. If we don't know, don't pay attention to the label of our students. How can we fix them? Imagine your students are beginners. However, uh, you are giving them 
intermediate level tests. Of course, they will not be motivated. This will demotivate them. For this reason, knowing labels and paying attention to interests, strengths, and limitations of your students can give you the chance to identify what kind of material you should provide during this lesson to your students. Now, next one. Choose authentic real life topics to teach. We talked about it already, right? So give them free choice to learn and collaborate. Now we had a really interesting teacher. Uh, I can't remember her name, unfortunately. So she said that she gives her students the chance to teach sometimes, right? Uh, I'm sorry, what was your name? Can you come back and say? Are you here? Okay, so this is giving them free choice. Give them free choice to learn, to choose what exactly they want to learn. Teach them this. They want to be a teacher sometimes, okay? Give them the chance. They not only be motivated, they will learn more and they will appreciate your hard work here, right? So next one. Choose different grouping, learning, and practicing styles. If you group them differently uh, and you will choose the styles of learning and practicing different styles, they will be motivated. Why? Because they don't want monotonous things. They want different experiences, right? So next one, differentiate instructions for variety of learners. Differentiating the instruction is really important. We'll talk about that during the session, okay? Use a variety of instructional strategies like lectures. One day you can have lecture. After lecture, you can have some discussion and then you can elaborate individual and group work and then you can add some game. Or you can use these different things in different lessons. If you are teaching at school, I know at school the time is very limited, right? So, and the last one is use visual aids, technology, and games effectively. Because, you know, technology can involve your students better, and visual aids can attract them better, and games uh, will make them fall in love with your lessons, right? Okay? Now, but what demotivates your students? Unfortunately, there are some factors which can demotivate our students. This one, first one is bombing a big test. Very often, uh, teachers want to bomb a big test and they think that, unfortunately, uh, I have to give this test. But please think, this big test can demotivate your students it will hurt them sometimes. So no opportunities to revise the material. Just two days before the exam, the teachers can tell the students, okay, in two days you will have a big test. And the students will not have any opportunity to revise the material. And they will be demotivated in this case. Too much lecturing. When uh, you have too much, much lecturing, the students will get bored, of course, and they will not understand sometimes anything, any single word, right? And this boring content can be, can get them bored, like this boy in the picture, right? And they will be demotivated here. And very often, lack of respect. Respect your students like your daughter or boy or son right like uh, a person because disrespect can demotivate the students all the time now that's all this motivation here right and let's turn to the second topic as quickly as possible how to develop bright lessons so if you want to develop bright lessons first of all you should be motivated as a teacher and motivate your students of course right but after motivation what we should do in developing bright lessons uh, 
uh, don't think that just you have found a really interesting ESL game on the internet and you provided this game and your students are happy. No. Very often, very often, the teachers want to do all these things at the same time, but as a result, they cannot motivate the students and the lesson will not be bright. Why? Because all the time they should pay attention to several functions, several things while elaborating our lesson. First of all, Bloom's taxonomy is one of the most important taxonomies to teach our students. Bloom's taxonomy was launched first by Benjamin Bloom and some other teachers, scientists, in 1956, right? But after some time, in 2001, another group of scientists, language scientists, revised it and changed the noun forms of all the labels of Bloom's taxonomy into the verb forms. So, original version of Bloom's taxonomy consisted of knowledge, comprehension, application analysis, synthesis, and evaluation. However, when they have changed all these nouns to the verb form, it became like remember, understand, apply, analyze, and instead of synthesis, they decided to put create on the top because it should be the last label. And evaluation, this verb form evaluate, will be before the create. So these are all the labels of new Bloom's taxonomy here. And if you look at it, while creating bright engaging ideas, bright engaging activities for the lessons, we should just not take the activity. It's very interesting. My students are having fun and it's okay. No. Here we should pay attention to all the labels of Bloom's taxonomy. For example, for remembering, which comes the first, first they will remember, they will remember some facts and information as well as basic concepts regarding to your topic. This will be a remembering stage. Then they will begin understanding the topic perfectly and then in the next stage, they can explain their ideas or information or some concepts they have remembered in the first stage. Then application comes, apply comes, and then they will apply their knowledge, right? And use the information they gain it, they remember it, and then understood in new situations they will apply apply this information in new style. After application, they will draw connections among ideas. By this way, they will analyze. And you see, for each label, some certain words can be used to understand the understanding of the student. Now, next one is evaluation after analyzing, after drawing connections to ideas. They will evaluate their ideas and then justify a sensible decision why they have come to like this conclusion. And they can argue here, they can support each other, they can critique, they can write some criticism here. And the last stage will be creation here. They will produce new and original work. Here they are also providing new situations, right? Using this information, gaining information in new situations. However, the, these situations are not discussed. This is creation for the last level is related to original work. Here they understand their criticism, their concerns, right? And then produce new or original work here. So, our, all our activities cannot combine, cannot be, cannot combine all these into one. We cannot combine all this into one activity, right? However, we can um, 
give the activities to the students, which can involve two or three of them. Okay? So, now here you can see a blank blue taxonomy, right? We are remember, understand, apply, analyze, evaluate, and create a given. So, think over quickly in one minute. What do you think? What kind of activities we can provide to our students in each level of Bloom's taxonomy? Now, you have one minute for this, and then we will have hot discussion. Okay, now your ideas. Please switch on your microphones. Can I ask you to switch on them? Mm -hmm. And it's better to pronounce them, right? I think it's good to write. Okay, Dilfuzo Alimba is writing. Remember something to help them recognize and notice to play video in form. Yeah, video is for remembering good source, right? Next, Bulba Homa Majiri is saying questions for activating schematic knowledge, right? Uh, but uh, which one? Remembering or understanding, okay. This is only my sensitivity. Okay, so uh, what do you think? What can we implement for remembering stage? What kind of activities? You can switch on your microphones and tell. Uh, may I say? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think uh, the very best way for my mm -hmm. students it's making or creating some ppts and uh, presentations and because uh, during the doing this presentation they learn they remember and understand and analyze what they want to do and uh, mm -hmm. during these uh, activities they evaluate their knowledge i think it's okay. a very good mm -hmm. i'm sorry what's your name nilufar uh, Zubaidva. nilufarapa thank you very much yeah. This is a very, uh -huh. really good idea. Now, for understand, who wants to tell the opinion? For understand. Mm -hmm. Any ideas? Maybe you wrote via chat. Okay, for understanding, you can create a family tree. Good idea, right? Okay, who else wants? Mm -hmm. Okay, mind mapping for understanding, right? It's a really great idea. Okay, for, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. So, for applying, anybody else wants to tell by switching on the microphone here? For applying. Okay. So for applying, we can also use mind mapping and creating family trees because you are applying your notes there, right? For analyzing, any ideas for analyzing? Okay, now in this case, let's turn to another chart here, okay? So here you can see two set of ideas and activities for Bloom's taxonomy here, right? Now, for create, these are all the activities. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's begin with remember. For remember, these are all the activities we can give our students for remembering. Try to uh, make a screenshot of this, please, because we will have some activities and we will discuss them. Then for understanding, these are all the activities which can be applied. 
for applied stage, these are all the activities. And these yellow ones are the verbs which can be related to these activities. And for example, for projects, you can ask your students to report, right? For video, for example, you can ask your student, students to sketch and produce, right? These are the related words. Now, now for analyze stage, these are all the activities which can be perfectly related and which can match here. And for example, for uh, making survey, we can ask our students to compare and categorize, right? These are related words. And for evaluating, all these activities can be very relevant. For example, if it is group discussion, yes, right? If it is group discussion, here uh, we can ask our students to critic, to solve, to judge each other, and to conclude and to justify their opinions, right? And for the last stage, which is create, these are all the activities which are related and all the words. Now, let's, uh, I have some activities for you to discuss according to Bloom's taxonomy here. Oh, this is the digital form of uh, Bloom's taxonomy. In each stage, what you can do uh, in online instruction, uh, I'll send you PPT to the group and you will investigate more yourself, okay? So now let's turn to the next stage before going to activities. This is the most important strategy for teachers to use to the uh, lessons engage study and activate right so engage means when you attract your students before the lesson at the beginning of the lesson it can be warm up leading activity and when they are warmed up attracted enough then you can begin explaining something different to them something related to your topic to them then after having some explanations, you can give the chance to your students to activate all their knowledge here. So, okay, what can your students do in each stage? For engaged stage, we should provide the context. For study, accuracy is really important. When we talk about accuracy, we mean grammatical range and accuracy very often. So here you will teach them grammar or vocabulary which they should know to speak in a perfect English, right? So and then in activate stage the fluency of the student comes and they will get the fluency after getting this accuracy. Okay? Now in each stage, you can involve your students by these activities, like in engaged stage, games, music, dramatic stories, exciting pictures, short answer questions can involve your students. And you see in study stage, very serious topics are involved from grammar to pronunciation rules. And for activate, it's better to implement some productive skills, right? which are role plays, dialogues, emails, and designing some advertisements maybe. Maybe very often you can have some debates and discussions with your students here. Now let's turn to activities in this case. Now activity one, uh, now listen to the activity carefully first and then we will have some discussion and what kind of labels are suitable to this activity, right? You see this very interesting activity, even adult learners. This uh, woman is really beautiful and really intelligent woman who works at Oriental Languages in Institute, right? And her name is Adibala, and she was really involved with this activity because she likes having fun with her students. It is from the bookshop there. So it is, this activity is called Who is the Real King and Queen? Here you will make some crowns for your students. You see the students are really happy 
wearing these clothes give them this opportunity then on the stickers you can write different concepts related to these very topics and then stick the stickers on the walls around the room and ask your students to have some groups each group chooses one person to wear a crown with one topic and all other members of the group go around the room and find the words or concepts or grammar rules related to the topic on the crown. This is a really interesting activity for the students. I'm giving one differentiation for online version. You can use MindMaster to use it even online. So, uh, what do you think? For this activity, what labels of Bloom's taxonomy can be implemented here? What do you think? Do you have any opinions about this? You can switch on your microphones and say, or you can write via the chart. Mm -hmm. This is analyzing, you think? This is you think applying new vocabulary to write a story and analyze the movie. Mm -hmm. Okay, you are right. You are right here uh, while applying, they are uh, implementing project work, right? And then they are analyzing by modeling and they are sketching, reporting, and categorizing. Definitely. The next activity is called Think. Pay a share. Think pay a share is a really interesting and important activity here. Here, the students first will think individually, then they will work with peers. You will provide one topic first, of course, then they will think individually, then they will discuss it with their peer and share with the whole class at the end right and for online version you can use zoom rooms here so what do you think what kind of labels of room taxonomy are implemented here any ideas mm -hmm. you can write the chat Okay, actually here also analyzing and evaluating are integrated in this activity because they are having group discussions and they are making their conclusions here. They are debating here, analyzing, justifying and judging. So analyzing as well as evaluating is used here. Okay, thank you. Now, next one is listen and draw. Here, you will have some groups with your students, right? And give each group one picture which is related to your topic, today's topic. And then you will ask one person to describe the picture to other members of the group and others will draw this picture. In online version, you can use and as pain, it will be really interesting for your students here, right? Okay, what do you think? It is, Hiram So is saying it is apply. Okay, what else? What other opinions? Do you have any opinion? Mm -hmm. It is remembering, definitely, right? So, the students are listening to, uh, to their group mate, right? And they are trying to remember here and they understand it and then they are creating something right they are remembering understanding and they are switching on creating something because they are drawing here right okay now we'll skip two activities in this case because we have lack of time you will investigate more at home if you are really interested in these activities so, and the next thing is differentiation. So what is differentiation? Differentiation is really important in facilitating our lessons. 
if you want your students to be involved to be involved to be motivated to your lesson towards your lesson differentiation is a must here so any ideas about differentiation in the classroom actually differentiation can be implemented not only in the classroom but in workplace or in any other places so for mixed ability classes right Dilfuzolimova you are definitely right it is for mixed classes differentiation is really important in facilitating our lessons why because this is the teacher's response to learners needs what kind of needs the learners have the teacher should pay attention to always and organize facilitate the lessons according to this so here very important is knowing the learner assessing their background knowledge and ongoing process in ongoing process knowledge adjustable assignments the assignments should be adjustable ones according to their interests their readiness their learning profiles right and there should be some questioning strategies because not we not only should teach the learners but also encourage them to answer the questions but by only this way we can encourage critical thinking here right and we should pay attention to curriculum approaches so differentiation is paying attention to learners needs to our students needs in the classroom so here we can uh, talk about it in three cases Differentiation can be uh, done by respectful tasks, by seeing respectful tasks, I mean the tasks which are proper, which are available to, to be done by the students. Flexible grouping, the students will work with different groups all the times, right, in different times. And continual assessment. The assessment shouldn't be only summative one, it should be formative one i mean on the go we should provide feedback constructive feedback to improve the knowledge of the learner in this case only we can have differentiation here so teachers can differentiate through content process and product content can be different one day globalization another day urbanization right the process can be different here the process of activities the process of the lesson different activities for different lessons the product can be differentiated the product of the lesson can be different for example for american learners the product of your lesson can be understood differently for uzbek learners it can be understood differently so and we can differentiate according to the students according to their readiness uh, we as teachers we always feel if they are ready for the lesson or no right so according to readiness we should provide different tasks to them according to the interest as we talked about Turing university students right their interest is in engineering right or for Babsi universities the interest is teaching I cannot give them the topic about engineering. It should be all about teaching, right? So learning profiles, what they have learned and what they are learning according to this level, we should differentiate the instruction. According to the environment, the environment, I mean, culture can be different. Uh, we should always, as teachers, I'm sure we always respect the cultures of our students. And according to this, we differentiate the instruction here, right? Okay, so we talked about all this and we should also pay attention to the abilities of our students. Our students can be, can have different abilities. And for example, some people can have visual spiritual ability, but another person can have bodily kinesthetic ability. And for visual spiritual learner, it's very interesting to draw something during the lesson. Even if it is English lesson, they, we can ask them to draw like in that activity I explain it to you right they can listen understand and draw bodily kinesthetic they want to do something by their body maybe we can ask them in the poll for example to raise the hands 
to sit down, to stand up, right? It will be very interesting for them. At the same time, we can try to teach all the learners in this case, right? Okay. Now, and uh, there are some more activities here. So the classes with differentiation and without differentiation, you can see the results. Almost for 50% more results we can achieve, right? So what makes our classes shine actually? Uh, sometimes we should add something which is out of topic to our class, or maybe it can be related to our topic, but it will be very different and interesting. The first one can be talking people, talking animations, right? It will be more interesting for our students if they listen to the explanation of grammar or vocabulary from this animation. Now listen to her. So that there is no sound. Oh, really? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, I should redemonstrate in this case. Maybe I have demonstrated without sound here. Also. Mm -hmm. It is a procedure of collecting and discussing the information from different sources to identify the knowledge of the students on knowing, understanding, as well as demonstrating the results of gain education. Okay. Due to Brown, now, can you hear the sound there? Yes, yes. Yeah, okay. Now, next one, very exciting one. Use your own videos. Because students are very interested in you, in your house, in your life. And uh, it will be very interesting for them to know a little bit about you sometimes. Now, like this. Hi, I'm Saudad. I'm going to continue with non count nouns, which are liquids, solids, gases, as well as particles. Now, let's begin with liquids, which are milk, water, and even Pepsi. Let's continue with some particles as sugar, rice, and some cereals. Another type of non count nouns is solids. They are meat, ice, and crisps. Moreover, the gases are also non count nouns. For example, apple. We can't count the air with breath. Or air repellent can't be counted, of course. You see, it will be very, really interesting for your students. After this, all my students knew that my kitchen is wet, right? Okay, now can you imagine making serious topic an amazing and easy to understand one? No, in this case, use posters. Ask your students to make posters according to your topic, and believe me, they will be involved a lot in this because posters are very great tools to learn by visual, visually, right? And uh, visually, they will get more information and they will remember more here. Okay, and teaching outside the classroom, we talked about it, it will encourage them to learn more here. Okay? And use different, of course, tech tools, like Paul Everywhere we have used, Poblet, Flip Quiz, Socrates, Kahoot, and some different tools. Here. So feedback, the last, this is the last one. Uh, I'm sorry, it was too long, I think. So, and the last one is feedback. Feedback should be constructive. While providing feedback to the learners, the teachers should pay attention to six things. So, it should be in a hamburger style sandwich, right? 
So first part, we should see something positive to our learners. Then, praise strong points or action. Then, a little bit compliment comes here. And then, after three slides of positive things, we cover our criticism with this. We should write some criticism to the students, you see. And then, after criticism, as to make it as constructive, we remind the person strong points of this. And then, give thanks and offer support in improvement here. By this way, our feedback will be constructive one. Unfortunately, this style of feedback, sandwich feedback, was criticized by uh, some scientists, and the scientists, language scientists, are looking uh, looking through this type of feedback sandwich again, but they didn't come to one conclusion yet. But still, this type of constructive feedback sandwich exists, and we should try to follow them. Okay, now we have completed all the motivational and organizational parts of our topic. And if you have time, we will have some, we will play some game of Kahoot. Uh, do you agree, guys? Just 10 questions. Do you have time? Yeah? Okay, if you are using computer, if you are using computer, in this case, you can just uh, go to Google and type kahoot.it. If you are using your mobile phone, press the button which is in the center of your telephone and go to Google. Don't leave Zoom, please, because in Zoom you should see it. And then you can go to Kahoot It. Okay, so you can play this Kahoot. Then after the webinar also, and it will be very interesting. Okay, so uh, please write if you like it the webinar or no in the comments, and you can find me in <coughs> Telegram or in my email here. These are references. The, these articles are really interesting ones, and they are covering all the concepts which are related to the topics we have covered here to, in today's motivational webinar. And if you have any questions, uh, you can write me to via email. If you have any ideas or discussions, please, uh, you can find me in Telegram, okay? So that's all for now. Back to you, Ms. Nadira. Thank you so much, Saudat. Um, just to clarify, did I miss that you said the Kahoot it? Uh, did you provide the game pin? Uh, when they go there, uh, it will be provided actually, but I wanted to provide it, but our time was not enough. Okay, I'll show in this case it now. Yeah, just in case people want mm -hmm, to play. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now let's go to this Kahoot. You can assign it as a homework, um, mm -hmm. and then like people can do it whenever they have time. And when you enter Google and type Kahoot, dot it you can see as the game begins and you should <clears throat> type this pin there this is the pin of the game you should type the pin and then you begin playing it Okay. Try this. okay yeah okay thank you so much um, I, I, I hope everyone liked the webinar and got some ideas on how to motivate students and themselves thank you so much have a good day bye okay bye everybody thank you for your participation
Thank you very much, Dr. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you, thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you, it was very amazing. Thank you for... Thank you so much. Bye bye. See you in the next webinars, Miss Nodre. <laughs> yes, bye sure. Bye. Stay tuned. We'll have a next week. Um, yeah, I'll announce it and I'll hold myself. I'll have the uh, webinar myself. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye.